Hey everyone, been needing to give an update here on the full year of um, relay cropping, our first try using relay cropping. Um, so I wanted to explain the whole system on exactly what we did. So um, basically this came about because we've been using cover crops now for the last couple of years and cover crops are continuing to grow, but seed can be an issue in terms of availability and price of seed. So I was like, well, dad, why don't we try to harvest some of this? And he was like, okay, that's not a bad idea. Um, but the economics don't fully work out just to be able to raise rye or wheat or oats or something like that in Southeast Iowa because the ground, um, it's too expensive. So we wanted to relay crop it. So we started out fall last year. Uh, so fall of 2018, we planted wheat across the entire farm. So the whole farm, clear back behind us, got a couple of guests here today. The whole farm um, planted wheat, but then in this 10 acre spot here where we got some pretty good hills and uh, some crappier soil, we upped the rate of wheat to um, about a bushel. So that's planted October 2018. Spring of 2019 here, we planted beans directly into this cover crop, into the wheat on April 25th. All we did then was come back on July 5th and we harvested the wheat. There was part of it that we were going to actually plant a early wheat in uh, on April 25th, come back maybe three weeks later in May and try to plant some other strips of wheat or of soybeans into the wheat. Um, but because of too much rain in May, that one never actually happened. So we ended up double cropping it. So nothing happened. Um, then at all through the month of May or in June, in July, um, we came back through to harvest this uh, soybeans and we harvested the beans over the top of the wheat. So essentially we had, we had wheat that was growing up here. The wheat was about 30 inches tall and the beans were about 20 inches tall. So we needed to get it harvested. Uh, so on July 5th, we came through and harvested the wheat over the top of the beans and, uh, and then left the beans there. We ran over some of them for sure, um, but overall we ended up with about 30 bushel wheat across this whole area, 30 bushel per acre. So not great, but there was literally zero inputs into that wheat. Now looking back, we probably could have used a little bit of fungicide, a little bit of, of some nitrogen and sulfur to get a little bit more yield, probably would have paid off, um, and the fungicide to keep a little bit better quality. Everything was standing fine, but germination is probably not quite perfect. Um, then we planted the beans um, behind where we were not able to do the late planted relay crop. So those beans got planted on July 5th, which is super, super late for planting beans around here. Um, we did run a pass a herbicide around the edges of this field right after we harvested. Um, but just around the outside with a quick shot of Liberty and that was all that this field had on it. And that's it. The, then we came back in October um, and harvested the soybeans that were in the initial relay crop and those beans did well. They did 44 bushel beans. So we had harvested 30 bushel wheat and 44 bushel beans. Um, the double crop beans were still really green when we got our first frost. They were super late and uh, they didn't get harvested until pretty late and they didn't do all that well. I think they did like 20 bushel, um, better than nothing. But overall, all we had going into this field was plant wheat, plant soybeans, harvest wheat, plant uh, or a little shot of herbicide and then harvest the beans. That's, a, it, that's it. So, and at the end of the day, 44 bushel beans, 30 bushel wheat, um, with not very much expense going into it, was pretty profitable. And you can see that we've got some uh, wheat that's growing out here that looks pretty good. Um, and this is 100% volunteer wheat. We didn't end up planting any of this. So now going forward, we definitely think that this is a good option um, to continue to expand. And there's other people that are trying this too. And we have a guest here. This is Ross, and Ross is actually um, with a group that I'll let him explain, but he is working on helping other people to diversify their operations and do other experiments kind of similar to ours, but tell us about 
multi-cropping Iowa. Right, so we started multi-cropping Iowa basically as a way of trying to create a centralized network for other people that are, are looking at trying to diversify their productions um, and really trying to make cover crops pay um, without public assistance and, um, you know, it's all about that, you know, the most important tool that farmers have and that's their soil. So yeah. protecting that soil, put more money in people's pockets and, and uh, figuring out how to do that with, uh, you know, with plants. Right. So, um, and I think that's what it boils down to is like, we can do other things, we can improve our soil health, yep. but we need to be able to make it logistically and economically work. Yep. And Ross is up in Northeast Iowa where their window's even shorter uh, than ours down here in Southeast Iowa. So it's a little bit different area. So if we can figure out how to do some relay cropping or more interseeded cropping, be able to open up that window to diversify, keep our ground covered and implement the principles of soil health. Uh, so um, definitely want to continue the conversation on this. We're gonna relay crop some rye next year. We've got barley planted for next year. Uh, we gotta go check that out here too. Yeah. And. Uh, and we'll we'll continue to experiment here uh, but you can reach out uh, to ross to at multi-crop in iowa for other info on some of their programs um, and leave some comments too we can get you connected that way